And that gets us to our big interview. As promised, it is Ohio State coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg who joins us now. Coach, it is rare that you have a team that is ranked in the top 25 and is also three games below 500. And that speaks to the absolutely brutal schedule that your team has played. I mean, it is shocking to look at just how many good teams you've played. So what have you learned about your team to this point in the season? Yeah, I, I think it, it showed our resiliency early in the season. You know, it's not the outcomes we want, um, but we were in a lot of those matches that, that we lost. Uh, I think it showed some toughness. Uh, I think that was... Shown especially on, on Sunday as we're down, you know, a couple points against Iowa in the first two sets, and we just kept fighting. We get just kept grinding and came out with a win in three that certainly could have gone different ways if we weren't battle tested heading in. So, you know, the schedule was was tough, uh, especially with a young group, but it was necessary for us to get ready for the Big Ten competition. I, I want to dive into that just a little bit more because I, I remember having you on last year and we talked about the same thing: how difficult your schedule was. <laughs> But that was a yeah. different group. That was a, an yeah. older veteran group, a group that ended up making it one step shy of the Final Four. Give me a sense of the philosophy. Are you just going to play really good teams every year, no matter who you have? Or was this schedule like set to. before? Yeah. <laughs> was it set before? I would like to, yeah. And every okay. year is a little bit different. I mean, scheduling yeah. is probably one of the toughest things we do as coaches. Uh, it's done in advance. A lot of times it's done in advance of our, our Big Ten schedule release, so we, we don't know what's coming ahead of us. Um, but I don't know that we would have changed anything different, knowing that we're going to face Nebraska and Wisconsin the first two weeks of Big Ten play. You know, I think for me, it's more about preparation for this season, the conference season and postseason. And a couple of years ago, we, we, were, we weren't ready. And, and I felt like that was a disservice to the team and, and something I wanted to fix. And so, you know, every year we're going to schedule tough, you know. Will it be as tough as the last two years? Sometimes, and other times maybe not. But we're going to face good opponents inside of our conference in the postseason. So the sooner we see some of those teams in the season in non-conference, the better. You're in a really weird spot after last year. You had five players who could have come back, but you had a fabulous recruiting class coming in, and you had to make a choice because of the number of scholarships that you had available. And so you're in a spot where you could not offer all of those players a scholarship, and you ended up with five players off of an Elite Eight team transferring out. Give people a sense of how that went down and kind of why you were in the unique circumstances. I know COVID was a huge part of it. COVID is the, the big part of it. You know, I feel like out of the seven seniors I had on the team, five were starters. I think that was a little bit unexpected and, and good on them for, for coming in and working hard and earning those spots. You know, in, in the other pieces, they all graduated, let's see, five of them graduated with master's degrees, or four of them. Um, you know, they, they've graduated with honors, they've graduated with degrees, a couple of them have two degrees from here, and they, they weren't ready to be done, you know, and so they wanted to continue their college experience, and unfortunately it wasn't here, it was somewhere else. And for me, it was, you know, building a program off of what they've done. And, you know, I keep saying it, they're Buckeyes for life. You know, there, there was no, there's no juicy story. There's no tea. Everybody wants this, this big story behind it. It was really hard. It was hard for all of us. Uh, it was hard for the, them as individuals and, and as Buckeyes. It was hard for me as a coach. It was hard for the team. But at the end of the day, it was a matter of like, we're going to build this program based on what we've done and we're putting it into the future. And it was, you know, there was tear shed. There was um, hugs, you know, and there's still going to be that. They're going to come back for alumni. I mean, there's no, you know, I, again, there, there's no story that's a negative story behind it, except that it didn't work out. And it was the, the COVID season that, that changed everything. You know, it, we, we can't go over a scholarship limit, similar to what Wisconsin was able to do a couple of years ago when they had all their super seniors back. So, it's unfortunate in a lot of ways, but we're, we're focused on what we're doing right now, just like the, the ones that have moved on. They're focused on their season and, you know, improving their teams, and that's what we're doing here in Columbus. It's just how hard we work with this group. Yeah, we're young, but we're getting better every time we're stepping on the court. And right now we're, we're looking for those results to, to change a little bit. Where have you seen the most growth with this young team? <laughs> Everywhere. You know, and, and that's what's exciting about it. And, and, again, I think frustrating with the L's that you see in that column, but – I think our, our growth is in every area. Uh, our defense is getting better, and that's going to continue to improve. Uh, you know, our passing is starting to settle in a little bit more. That needs to improve. So, so everything that we're growing in also needs to improve. So, it's 
that just that grind of getting better inside of a conference season where we're in the toughest conference in the country and how much can we get better every day, win or lose. One player who is back and is a superstar is Emily Londot. What has her role been in this process, particularly as a veteran and as a superstar? All of it. She has to take on everything. Everything, And we talk about the load that she has to carry both physically but also emotionally and mentally for this group. And she's handling it with such poise that uh, I think it's remarkable. You know, we, we've moved her to the left side. She's now handling the load in the serve receive, which is not an easy task to do. And she's one of our best passers. And so uh, teams aren't serving her. That's that's probably a good thing for them because when, when they do, we, we're in system a little bit more. But she has to be ready to go at all times, you know, and people are going to start coming after her as, as the other passers settle in a little bit more. So she's done a, a great job for us in terms of leadership. Uh, Riley Raiders, the other one, and our other senior, Sarah Sue Morpitzer. I mean, they're just they're coming to play. They're they're setting the standard. They're they're just holding our team accountable. And, and that's what we need with a young group. Coach, we had you on last year, as I mentioned. I was not aware of this story at the time. So I want to ask you about it. You grew up in the Pittsburgh area. And uh, Kelly Kovac Shanley, who is the softball coach at Ohio State, was good friends with your sister. You guys grew up together. Help yeah, me understand she's the nature. Friends with my sister. Yeah. Help me understand the nature of that relationship and how it's kind of progressed through the years, and and how you lean on each other to what extent you might now. Yeah, she was she was my sister's best friend growing up. Uh, she was over her house all the time, so she was like a sister to me and, and a mentor and a role model and somebody that I wanted to emulate uh, as an athlete. And I, not that I followed her path. I mean, she, obviously she she picked the softball route, but I played basketball, I played softball, I played volleyball, and I I wanted to be as good as their teams, if not better. And, and she not knowingly pushed me to succeed. I think at a high level in high school, and you know, just following her career and her path. And the fact that we're here at Ohio State together, I think it's pretty remarkable. And so when I was applying for the job, you know, I called her and what do I need to know? Like, who do I need to talk to? And, and she had a lot of good words of wisdom with that and has, has really been a supporter of mine as well. So it's a really unique and cool relationship and, and one that I'm really thankful for. That is super cool. Really a, a neat, neat story. I'm going to leave you with this. We have not talked about the elephant in the room yet, Coach. You've got number one Wisconsin tonight. I mentioned it's on the Big Ten Network. Tell me about preparing for the Badgers and, and the challenge ahead. It's preparing for any other team. I mean, they're, they're really good. They're balanced with their offense. Um, you know, they have experience and, and brought in some good talent in the offseason. So for us, it's about just attacking back and not allowing their momentum or them bouncing a the ball to really affect us. You know, we have to play good on defense. You know, we have to slow them down a little bit, and we have to be the aggressors. Jen Flynn Oldenburg, really fun to visit with you again. Best of luck tonight against the Badgers, and thanks so much for giving us some of your time on game day. I know that's not always easy to do. Oh, I just wait around all day. It's fine. This is good. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Our pleasure.